Welcome to another broadcast. The title of today's broadcast is Saint Paul Co Redeemer. We're going to start uh, with a quote. It's going to be verse 24 of chapter 1 of, of uh, St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. It reads like this. It makes me happy. To be suffering for you now and in my own body to take the hardships that still have to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body. The church. Colossians 1 24. It makes me happy to be suffering for you now and in my own body to make up all the hard ships hardship that still have to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body the church the co redemption co redemption of Mary and the saints has always been a part of Catholic belief, not Protestant belief. In the heart of the Catholic Church, our belief is that we are collaborating with Christ when we suffer and even when we simply pray for others. The Protestant mentality does not believe that works as opposed to faith in their understanding have power to redeem. However, Catholics have always understood what God told us through Saint Augustine, that is, God who created you without you cannot save you without you. The worldly worldly views of Protestantism separate faith and works of piety. Hence, we can say that removing co-redemption from the vocabulary fits perfectly with the Protestant theology or narrative, which abstracts 
works from faith, making one another independent from each other. Thus, we have a lot of people who do not live a, a life of piety, believing that works are abhorrent to faith. In order to justify their theology, they claim that Christ's works alone save them, save them, independent of the fruits that they have. Thanks to that belief is the horrendous sins of so many followers of those for which faith is just an abstract concept detached from works. Ideology which has infiltrated Catholic clergy and laity. Thus they claim based upon their understanding of Christ's cross, that their salvation has already taken place and that no sin that they make can send them to hell. In my opinion, that Protestant belief, justification, by faith alone, close quotations, is just an excuse to keep on living a life of sin. Hence, it is important to note that co-redemption is at the heart of true, true of true Christian belief. For God that created us without us cannot save us without us. Saint Paul clearly expresses he is a co-redeemer in verse 24 of chapter 1 of the letter to the Colossians. In addition, the Church confirms such co-redeeming works in the lives of the saints. And if that co-redemption co is a factual matter in their testimony of life, it is even more in the life of Mary Immaculate. So, by stating that Mary Immaculate is co-redeemer, we implicitly state that we are all called to redeem our brothers and sisters, offering our lives for the salvation of others, which, after all, the new commandment he gave us. That is the new commandment he gave us. To love one another as I have loved you. And to make it clear, he adds, no one loves more than the one who gives his life to save others. Otherwise, what would be the purpose of suffering and penitence, sacrifice, illness, and love itself? Thus, 
love matters because love saves others. By denying that Mary is called Redeemer, that her works, her faith, saves us, we deny that the life and the sufferings of the saints have any purpose, any efficacy towards saving us. We deny the Bible. We deny, we would deny the words of Saint Paul when he said, it makes me happy to be suffering for you now and in my own body to make up, to complete all the hardships, hardships, a hardship is struggle, it's a pain, it's an illness, it's a disease, like the one you may be suffering, or your grandparents, or your parents, or your children, that still have to be undergone by Christ for the sake of his body, the church. So that means that when we suffer, when you suffer, when those that you love suffer, their suffering is not, not in vain. Their suffering saves lives from hell, from purgatory. Because we have a mission. When you pray, when you offer penance, you're saving others from hell, from purgatory. Why? Because Jesus Christ wants to embed us, wants to, in, wants to include us. He wants to make us a part of his sacrifice in the cross. We are not saying that his blood is not enough. Of course it's enough to expiate, to save the whole world. But he's inviting us. Otherwise, what would be the purpose of suffering? What would be the purpose of penance? What would be the purpose of dying on the cross like the apostles did or being decapitated or, or stoned to death? There would be no purpose. There would be futile attempts to do anything. They would serve for nothing. But the church does not give us that testimony. I remember the lives of saints, this little girl that prayed to Jesus so hard. She wanted to have, she wanted to help Christ save us. So she offered her body so that she would get sick. She would get a disease and die to save others because she loved Christ and Christ in return shared his cross with her to deny the works of co-redemption not, not only of Saint Paul but the church is to deny Christ to deny that Mary is co-redeemer in her suffering because she suffered more than any other person after Christ because she was looking at her own son, her flesh, her bones, her blood were in Jesus Christ. And her faith is the one that actually saved us. Faith, what is faith? 
Faith is unconditional trust and confidence in God, in his words. I am praying for Pope Francis so that he realizes that it is more important to encourage the church to be co-redemptive than for us to be in union with Protestants by sacrificing Christian teaching, co-redemption, that is. After all, if St. Paul is co-redeemer, why wouldn't Mary Immaculate be co-redeemer as well? She would indeed be the first and foremost co-redeemer, if on top of it all, we can all acknowledge without a doubt that her, a man to the message of the angel, gave us the Logos incarnate, the Word of God made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is like God. To him all growing, honor and power, for he shares with us the body of Christ, his church, the works of salvation through Jesus Christ in the cross. Thank you for listening.